16.1c, complete the square, irrational and complex solutions. If we can't simplify the radical, we simplify what we can. So in example one here, the first thing we want to do is we want to get our variables on one side. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm going to get 5x squared minus 3x equals negative 2. Divide everything by 5, so I now have x squared minus 3 fifths x equal to a negative 2 fifths. So now we take 1 half times our 3 fifths, and we're going to get 3 tenths squared equals our c, which is going to be 9 one hundredths. Now we're going to put it into our perfect square form directly now. So I'm going to go x minus my b, which is the 3 tenths, squared equals our negative two-fifths plus our nine one-hundredths. If you want to do the intermediate step of writing it out, um, the x minus three-tenths squared um, unfactored before you put it in the factor form, you may do that. But let, I'm just trying to show you a way of saving a few steps and writing a little bit of a time. So now what we have here is x minus 3 tenths squared equal to negative 31 over 100. Take the square root of both sides. We now have x minus 3 tenths equal to plus or minus the square root of i, because we want to bring that negative out, or i square root 31, all over 10. We're going to add 3 tenths to both sides. So we now have our answer, and we'll write it in this form, 3 plus or minus i square root 31 all over 10. And we have our two solutions. Let's look at example two. Now, we're going to change this problem just a little bit because right now it works out really nicely. And um, we need to uh, an example that has an irrational or complex solution. So let's change this to 16. Okay, so now that we have that taken care of here, just forget that that's a 32, we are going to get our x's on one side, so we're going to subtract 8x here. So now have 16 equal to 4x squared minus 8x, divide everything by 4, so we have 4 equal to x squared minus 2x. Now one of the things that we might want to do here is to get everything uh, or change places here. we we'll just swap sides and be a little more comfortable that way. So we have x squared minus 2x equal to 4. So we're going to take 1 half times 2 and we're going to get 1 squared equal to our c, which is going to equal 1. Okay, so now we're going to put it right into our perfect square form. So we're going to have x mi minus 1 quantity squared equal to our 4 plus 1. So we have x minus 1 squared equal to 5 
take the square root of both sides and we get x minus 1 equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. Add 1 to both sides and so we're going to get that x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. And we're done.